Hey everybody, I'm Chris Wook. This is the S Pen. This is a hacksaw. Guess what I'm gonna do? Now since the last Break It Down video, I've gone through and read every single comment you guys have left. Going through all of those comments, two things kept popping up. First, you want me to get more technical. And second, you really want to see me break the S Pen. Believe me, I am more than happy to do both of those. So, let's break it down again. Let me tell you, it was not easy getting this thing open. Apparently, with the earlier iteration of the S Pen, it was fairly easy to take apart as long as you were careful. This was not the case for me. Yes, I really did need to use a hacksaw. What you're seeing here isn't even all of it. I had to saw somewhere near an additional centimeter off to gain access to the guts of the S Pen. There is one part of the S Pen's internals that you can access without tearing the entire thing apart, and luckily it's the only part you'll probably ever need to access. Two potentiometers are located beneath the S Pen button, which is easy enough to pry off with a knife as long as you're careful. These can be used to adjust the S Pen's sensitivity, though you shouldn't need to do this unless you're having problems. Now let's get down to what we're all here for and start exploring the internals of the S Pen. First, we'll look at the button right next to the potentiometers we just looked at. This, as you might guess, is what is pressed when you click the S Pen button. From here, we'll move on to the nib and coil. You can see that the actual nib itself is just a small piece of plastic. When this is pressed, the part that actually moves is the coil assembly. This is where the pressure sensitivity comes into play. As we saw in the last video, the coil here is what picks up the electromagnetic field coming from your note device. I can't tell from looking here where the energy picked up from the coil was stored, but considering the relatively small amount of power required by the S Pen, it's likely stored in a capacitor somewhere here in the circuit board. You can probably tell from looking here that what goes on in the S Pen is actually relatively simple. The real power behind the S Pen's functionality is the Wacom dual digitizer that sits behind the screen in whatever device you may be using. The S Pen circuit uses the energy it receives from the electromagnetic field to start oscillating and return its own magnetic signal. The digitizer then determines the S Pen's position relative to itself by plotting the points on its own internal grid. This dual digitizer is also what allows the Note 2, for example, to receive both standard capacitive signals like you touching the screen and the electromagnetic resonance from the S Pen. Now you might wonder if this wastes battery life. The answer is... kind of? It doesn't take a lot of juice to power the relatively small field needed for the S Pen, but at least in the Note 2, you can turn this off by using the battery saving feature. This turns off the EMR portion of the digitizer when the S Pen is seated in its holster or whatever you'd like to call it. Speaking of this, in the comments from the last video, Somebody asked how the device can tell when the S Pen's been detached. There are a few ways this could be done, but the simplest and most likely option is that the spring-loaded detent mechanism that holds it in place sends a message when the S Pen is removed. Simple as that. And there you go. Now, let me show you something. This is what's left of the S Pen, and this thing is never going back together again. Unless you're prepared to buy a new S Pen, I'd say this is one of those things you don't want to try at home. Now I'd like to take a quick second and say thank you to everybody who left feedback on the first Break It Down video. Whether it was positive or negative, we really appreciate it. Looking through all the comments, you guys have ideas for a ton of stuff you'd like to see us break down, and believe me, we're keeping track of all of them. That said, keep the ideas coming. It's a lot of fun putting these together, and as long as you keep watching them, we'll keep making them. Now here's the thing, we have new videos going up basically daily now, so if you want to stay caught up, make sure to subscribe. I am Chris Wook from Android Authority, thank you for watching.